Oh, he's actually alive. I'll be damned. And we're back to the Final Fantasy Moogle music. Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court, if you're actually capable of doing that. Uh, I can do without the sword. Oh yeah, that's not actually your job. You're just <laughs> being a jerk. <laughs> I can do without the sarcasm, Mr. Mora. Eugene is Eugene! Eugene, monkey! Return to monkey! <laughs> Harold has returned to monkey! The monkey lives. Bailiff, make sure the stenographer gets Harold's translations. Ugh. We can't see the armbands on him right now. He must be at his normal intelligence now. Yeah! How, how? Although, how would he even wear them? I mean, he could wear them as a belt. Or as a headband under his helmet. Perhaps he held them in his hands. They only require physical contact, after all. Eugene, did you steal from the gallery on the night of the murder? Ooh, ooh, cock, cock. Stenographer, did you get that? Okay, that's... That, that's two ooks and two ahs. Eugene never steal from Harold. Eugene respect Harold. Uh, where's where's Harold to uh, to pro be providing these things? Then you'll have no problem testifying about where you were during the Lord's Ball. I can't believe I let you convince me to permit this. <laughs> the judge is just like I I hate my life. I'm 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 getting a new job. Whoa. Okay, so we're gonna get. We're gonna get free thoughts flowing on every statement here, because the monkey's probably like an open book. It doesn't know how to protect its thoughts, and that's a good thing, because we can't understand a word it's saying. Eugene, explore house! Eugene, look for a new place to play! Eugene, also look for spiders! Spiders, yum yum! Oh, that's interesting. Can you familiar a spider, and what does that get you? Probably nothing. You think Eugene steal armbands of intellect? Oh, look at how look at how shy he is. Eugene never steal from Harold. Harold's friend. Eugene always Harold's friend. Apes strong together. Huh. Where is this going? Did the monkey actually Are we off on another uh, wild goose chase or is this going? Where is this going? <clears throat> Man, this judge, this judge is starting to be more lenient than the one in Ace Attorney, which is frankly impressive. Wow, you did it, Cuthbert. You blew this case wide open. <laughs> God, the sarcasm is just, is just dripping off of her. Is this really going to help us? Look, you just have to trust me on this. I trust you? <laughs> Maybe less with each passing stream? That sentence sounds like it turned into a question at the end. Man, that question is... I mean, that monkey is just losing his shit. Um, interpret. Wait a minute. I don't remember interpret. What does this do? Objection! Oh, wait, no. The witness's thoughts contradict the evidence. Oh, I just... I'm just slamming him. Never mind. I don't, I don't even have evidence. I'm just, like, interpret. All right, well, let's just press and see what it gets us. But Harold is an associate of House Frega. Surely you visited Frega Manor before that night. Manor constantly changes, William always doing renovations. There's always a new discovery to be made. I suppose that makes sense, William certainly had the gold for it. Man, his house was simple as hell, what are you talking about? Anyway, what else did you do that night, Eugene? <clears throat> it was also small for a guy with 10 million gold. Eugene also looked for spiders, spiders yum yum. Um... Oh, that would be funny. What if he found the sword in Frega's room and stole it and then Tracker found it and then just stole it and put it back where it was? But just by sheer coincidence. But also, look for... Hang on. Look for spiders. Storage room? So, the, again, the rat that Yawn caught, did it have the sword and then dropped it? And then the monkey was in here and it's like, I found spiders. Ooh, that's a sword. Wouldn't it know what the sword is? I need a story on this sword. The monkey surely saw the sword, recognized it, brought it back, and that's why it had it. That doesn't explain why it was invisible. Maybe there was a spell cast on the vents that anything passing through them would turn invisible. Because Beatrice just expected that only to apply to rats. Uh, there might be spiders in the pantry, maybe? Certainly the storage room. Certainly Beatrice's bedroom. 
So at least those places. Maybe the rooftop garden. I don't know what's up with that rooftop garden. It's just there. Eugene also looked for spiders. Spiders, yum yum. Do you enjoy eating spiders? Spiders, good, rich in nutrients, but I'm mad about it for some reason. Wait, really? Some cultures in the Eastern Kingdoms eat roasted crickets. I've tried them. They're actually not bad if they're prepared correctly. I don't think I could ever be that adventurous. Can we please stay on topic? Why were you mad about that? You think Eugene steal armbands of intellect? I wasn't accusing you of anything, Eugene. Perhaps you accidentally unlocked the case and took them thinking they were some sort of toy. This could all be an honest mistake. Eugene, not dumb dumb. Well then, you need to tell us about why you had the sword. Eugene know how important artifacts are to Harold. Eugene never take them from him. So why did you have the sword? Eugene never steal from Harold. Harold friend. So is this what we press? Or uh, it, insight or whatever it was? You might not have knowingly done it, but perhaps you took one of the artifacts by accident. Eugene never do that. <clears throat> why is he afraid? Then how do you explain your brief contra contact with a sort of spell eating? Harold couldn't have telepathically contacted you unless one of you was wielding it. Yeah, tell us about that. Eugene doesn't understand question. Right, he won't understand how the sword works without his heightened intellect. Unless, unless what? Eugene, always Harold's friend, Ape strong together. Do you consider yourself close to Harold? Well, he's as familiar. I would guess so. They literally have a magical connection to each other. Right. I suppose the bond between a mage and his familiar would require a lot of trust. Harold saved Eugene from bad man years ago. Eugene would never betray. So you're a rescue. Bad man lock Eugene in cage. He tell people to throw peanuts at Eugene. Harold take Eugene away from that prison. Lock up, bad man. He seems to genuinely care for Harold. Could that be why he did this? Yeah, like I was saying before, someone threatened him and said, I'm going to kill Eugene unless you do this stuff. He clearly feels indebted to him. Why is this icon still on my screen? That might be his motive. Tyrion, <laughs> the hell. I know, I know, I know it looks bad, but I swear there's more to this than meets the eye. If you say so, there has to be something in his statements. He had to have been wearing the armbands on the night of the murder. Which thought reveals that? Think about how Tracker spoke. Is there anything different in the way Eugene is speaking right now? Ah, okay, does he know something that he shouldn't? Eugene, explore house, look for new place to play, look for spiders, spiders yum yum. You think Eugene steal armbands of intelligence? Eugene, never steal from Harold, Harold's friend. Eugene, always Harold's friend, apes strong together. Apes strong together is also something that would make him ally possibly with another human, but obviously he's loyal to Harold. Well, again, I don't have a penalty for pressing or interpreting, I should say. Maybe it's this? The only reason I say that, or one of the reasons I say that, is because his icon is different. Look at how much more thoughtful he is here. In the other frames, he's panicking. This is closer to a proper English uh, sentence, and also, he knows what they're called. He said before that he was confused about the sword of spell eating. When we asked him about it, it's like, what that do, sort of thing. But here he's like, oh, armbands of intelligence? So, hey, uh, monkey, what, what, what you know about armbands? Yeah, that's what I thought. The sprite did kind of give it away, though. Wait a minute. Eugene, I asked you before if you stole anything from Harold's gun. Oh, see, this is the other thing I was curious about. Did we actually mention the armbands of intelligence? If we didn't, that's a dead, dead giveaway, but I couldn't really prove that we hadn't said it. Eugene, no! Eugene would never steal from Harold. Cuthbert, don't waste our time by having him repeat that statement. That's the thing, Miss Tamora. That's not the same statement he made in his testimony. I asked the witness if he stole an artifact from the gallery. I never mentioned the armbands of intellect. Ook? What are you talking about now? The witness lacks the understanding to differentiate between the artifacts. It was clearly just a simple mistake. Nothing is clearly a mistake in these games. It's not just the fact that he named the wrong artifact, Miss Tamora. It's the fact that he used its actual name. 
I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean, Mr. Cuthbert. Your Honor, animals can't speak the same language that humans do. Even when a telepathic link is established, the vocabulary is extremely limited. Right! Tracker called the sort of spell eating a stick before. It was hard to understand what he really meant. Exactly, so that raises the question. How did Eugene know they were called the Armands of Intellect? Wait, how did he know? The Armands were stolen during the Lord's Ball and replaced with a well-made replica. Where are the Armbands of Intellect right now? If he had worn the Armbands when he was sneaking through the vents, he would have never had the opportunity to put them back. And the Armbands are still missing. Are they in the vents? Tracker is wearing the murder weapon at this moment. I love the sentences that are just here sometimes. Eugene stole found is is wearing? He could be is wearing, but I feel like he'd be more intelligent. Um, I mean, this could... I'm going to throw this out there and see if it's true. I don't actually believe it, but it might be the case. Oh! Okay, so maybe, maybe they're on him, but he's barely touching them or something. It can't be. Is he really... The armbands were designed to be worn by humans, so Eugene couldn't wear them on his arms. So where would he wear them? It's a belt. You initially thought he carried them in his hands, but there's a far simpler explanation. Under his hat? Eugene, do you still maintain that you didn't steal the armbands of intellect? Eugene told you already! Eugene never steal from Harold! Is he wearing them as a belt? He might be. Then I suppose you wouldn't mind taking off your hat! Aha! They are under his hat. Oh, there we go. There's the sprite. There's the evil genius again. I mean, we speculated under his hat initially. Just as a wild guess. It still could be a belt or something, but uh, under his hat. The boy's got a new lining in there. Are you serious right now? I mean, it would be very easy to confirm. You don't think he's wearing them right now, do you? It's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> We've said that a few times for a lot of nonsensical things. I need to... Get that sentence out of my, uh, lexicon. The armbands were taken on the night of the murder, and they are still missing. If Eugene did indeed, indeed steal the armbands that night, he would have never had the opportunity to return them. He had no choice but to continue wearing them until the investigation was over. That is absolutely ridiculous. You're spinning a fairy tale. My actual guess was going to be that they're still in the, uh, in the vents somewhere. But, uh, no, I guess he's just still got them on him. Do you honestly expect us to believe that a monkey increased its intellect beyond human limits? Well, that's what they do. Welcome to Magic Land. If I'm wrong, the witness can easily refute my theory by removing his hat. Nope. Nope. That's the anime glasses push. You caught me. Well, what's it going to be, Eugene? We see him fully break character, and he slowly but silently lifts <laughs> his hat. He's now the smartest man in the world. You could have just worn him as a belt. No one would have checked your underwear, but no, you had to put him under your hat like a doofus. No! You can't be serious! Everyone can see it plainly. He's wearing the armbands like a crown around his tiny head. Ha <laughs> ha Look at this guy! From out of his hat, you can see him pull out something else. So why did you steal them on that night? Oh, God! <laughs> so, this is what we're dealing with now. This is this game. Welcome to the game, everyone. This is, uh... This is a thing. This is happening. This is real. <sighs> well... It talks? It sure does. <laughs> it talks and it smokes a pipe. <laughs> and it just sits there lounging here. It's like, I am now smarter than Harold. I, I am the boss and you are the familiar old man. Well done, Mr. Cuthbert. I shouldn't have underestimated you. I'm going to try to make this guy sound as, as posh and sophisticated as possible. <laughs> Are you... No. Here we go. Here's the Ace Attorney reaction. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I know for a fact that reaction happened in an Ace Attorney case. I just can't remember which one. This is probably a blessing in disguise. I don't think I can bear debasing myself any longer. <laughs> Notice he's still got the W Objection. sprite. Yeah, I object, I object to everything I'm seeing right now. I, I'm, I, I am out. I am done. This is. I don't care. I am quitting this job. I'm going to work it up. I'm going to work at a medieval McDonald's. F this. Objection! I object to everything that's happening right now. 
On what grounds, Mr. Tomorrow? On the grounds that it's stupid. <laughs> what grounds? Everything about this situation is objectionable. It's downright absurd. Is he sir? The monkey is the accomplice. Did she know that? But is he the murderer? Who's the frickin' murderer? Beatrice is the accomplice. The monkey is the accomplice. The monkey might have done it for Harold because of the will or possibly being threatened, but who murdered the man? This case is bonkers. Yeah, is he seriously Beatrice's accomplice? This is downright absurd. Is this the first time we've actually caught a thought from Ruby, by the way? She usually protects her thoughts very well. This might actually be the first time the Eye of Horus has worked on her. In fact, let's see if uh, Tyrion comments on that. But Miss Tamora, we can't deny what's clearly in front of us. Look at this frickin' monkey. I was not ready for today. <laughs> Celeste is also done. She's like, I'm out. I'm out. There's not enough spells in the world for me to handle this. How is he even talking right now? Scholars believe that humans and apes evolved from a common ancestor. Perhaps all apes can speak the common language under the right conditions. Evolved, please. I've observed your society. I think calling humanity evolved is being quite generous. This can't be happening. Well, are you all done gawking at me like a bunch of simpletons? Simpletons? Wait a minute. It's quite difficult to separate myths from actual historical accounts. Right, I remember encountering a similar problem at the Imperial Academy. Ah, you must be quite dedicated to your studies. They let the simpleton in the Imperial Academy? Rude, but you suppose that can't be helped? Every insulting thought that you've seen from Harold... They weren't Harold's thoughts at all! Oh, damn! They were Eugene's thoughts! He's been wearing the armband since we first met! Well, that's gonna warrant going back and watching the uh, old streams in VOD some more. But I still don't understand. Why would you even take the armbands in the first place? I'll admit that the Lord's Ball was one of many occasions. The first time I touched them was due to sheer chance. You put them on by accident. My unawakened self was enamored by its glittering sheen. I merely wanted to touch them. But when I first held them in my hands, I experienced a sense of clarity that I'd never felt before. I was afraid of what I'd experienced, so I left them alone. But as I returned to my primitive lifestyle, I couldn't stop thinking about what I'd felt that day. You were hooked. I wouldn't quite phrase it like that, but I suppose you're not wrong. I already knew the password to Harold's vault, so I'd come in from time to time and indulge in the armband's power. But the more time I spent with my awakened intellect, the more I craved its power when I had to put them away. And that's when you made the replica. While no one was watching, I devised a plan to discreetly take the armbands. Harold would have eventually discovered that they were stolen, but he would have concluded that a noble from the Lord's Ball took them. Because of the pressure that he was receiving from the Crown. I'm not proud of what I've done, but I've never expected things to reach this point. I didn't expect someone to steal the sword of spell-eating as well. And I certainly didn't expect a murder to happen that night. So... Was he actually not involved? Was he the accomplice or not? What's going on here? <clears throat> so you still maintain that you're innocent? Of course I do. I stole the armbands, but I did not murder William Frega. Nor did I take the sword of spell eating. Yeah, but you found it. Allow me to elaborate. Please do. Well, who thought the stream was going to go like this? Oh, it's the fancy music. I need to know how you found that sword. That is uh, information that is long overdue that you need to tell us. I'll admit that I took the armbands and replaced them with a replica, but I was not the crook who took the, the sword of spell eating. I, I mean, you wouldn't have been able to smash the glass. The thefts were completely different from one another. The display case for the sword was completely shattered. I spotted the sword when I was exploring the manor. It was lying in the middle of the hallway. Oh! What's up with that? It was lying in the middle of a hallway. That's where, um... That's where Tracker found it. I wondered why such an important artifact would be lying there, so I took a closer look to inspect it. That's when I heard Harold call out to me telepathically. The sword must have protected me and Harold from the anti-magic field. 
I wanted to take the sword and return it, but a wild dog chased me away from the sea. So the monkey is not the one who draws. So there were two quote unquote rats. There was a flying one and there was a jumping one, and Eugene was probably the jumping one. He has a point. He didn't need to shatter the display case of the sword. Yeah, he already knew the passwords. But Tracker said that Eugene was the one who dropped the sword. Furthermore, he escaped into the air vent that led into William's study. His actions that night were definitely not as innocent as his testimony implies. He must have lied somewhere. How come I can't see the monkey's thoughts anymore? I guess he is smarter than the average human, so... Maybe he's... His defense went up. <laughs> his defense increased by 30%. I'll admit I took the armbands and replaced them with a replica, but I was not the crook who stole the sword of spell-eating. You stole the armbands by using Harold's spoken password. Am I... Wait. Wait, how did you speak it? I need, I need that explained. Yes, I sit on his shoulder most of the time. He obviously never suspected what I did do, so it was a simple matter of listening to him while he transported the artifacts to Frega Manor. And can I assume that you knew the passwords for the other displays as well? I do, and I can easily demonstrate it. I doubt that he'd lie about that when we can easily check it. Even so, you already lied about not stealing the armbands. Why should we believe you now? The answer to that lies in the physical evidence. The thefts were completely different from one another. The display case for the sword was completely shattered. How do you know that you didn't shatter the glass to cover your tracks? Harold's password nullifies the locks. But they don't nullify the magic that protects the glass. Harold told you himself, didn't he? Only a powerful mage could have shattered the reinforced glass. But as a familiar, magic can be cast through you. Only Harold can cast magic through me. I can't cast any spells by myself. And even if I could, Harold's spell compendium doesn't have a spell that's powerful enough for that. His logic is sound. But if what he's saying is true, who shattered the glass? Again, Beatrice seems like the most logical argument, but it could have been, uh, it could have been Steelwind. It could have been Lucius, or Lucio, or whatever the hell's name is. Anyways! I spotted the sword when I was exploring the manor. It was lying in the middle of a hallway. But that location was near the Frega's bedrooms. Don't tell me that you... What do you take me for? I know what a bedroom looks like, and I never enter one uninvited. Then why were you there in the first place? I was coming back from the rooftop garden. But I suddenly felt something interfering with the armband's magic. The anti-magic fields. Yes, I was worried that something had happened, so I made my way back to the gallery to meet up with Harold. I see. Oh, that's an interesting point. The anti-magic fields would have uh, interfered with the armbands. Could we add this to the... I, I guess it would have interfered, but not necessarily nullified, because the armbands of intellect are not strictly speaking magic. Can we add this to the testimony? Very well. I wondered why such an important artifact would be lying there, so I took a closer look to inspect it. Wait a minute. <clears throat> These are, uh, good and done. What, what's the information that was added? I don't, I don't see any of this testimony actually changing. All right. Uh, I guess we'll just keep pressing. I wondered why such an important artifact would be lying there, so I took a look to inspect it. And that's when you made contact with it. Yes, I was quite surprised, too. At the time, the magic of the armbands was being nullified. But when I picked up the sword, my intelligence finally returned. That's how I knew that I was holding the sword of spell eating. That's when I heard Harold call out to me telepathically. The sword must have protected me and Harold from the anti-magic field. Was this the first time he tried to contact you this night? No, he had telepathically messaged me earlier that night. But I was so absorbed in my exploration that I ignored him. He was absorbed in his exploration. But that really caused him to ignore a call from Harold. I wanted to take the sword and return it, but a wild dog chased me away from the scene. Don't you have enough time to grab the sword? You were holding it, after all. I'm not proud to admit it, but my survival instincts took over. At that point, I was more concerned about escaping that wild animal. I suppose that makes sense. Tracker is several times larger than him. He has every reason to be afraid. His story makes sense. There's no way he could have shattered the glass. I suppose so. But Tracker saw him that night. He was definitely traversing the vents of that hallway. 
Which means he lied somewhere in his testimony. Did he now? Where's the update? I missed that. I don't see where this, the testimony actually changed. I think he changed it due to this, right? I spotted the sword when I was headed back from the rooftop garden to the gallery. I mean, that's across the whole... Isn't it in your evidence? Isn't what in my evidence? Is there anything specifically in my evidence? Oh. No. If we ask him to update his testimony, he updates his testimony, but he didn't update his testimony. Headed directly from the rooftop gallery. I think this might be what updated, but it was not worded that well. Do you honestly expect us to believe that someone just left the sort of spell eating in that hallway? Think what you will, but it's the truth. Perhaps the murderer left it there after they were done using it. That is a weird place to use the sword because the study is on the first floor. Why would the sword of spell eating just be lying in a hallway on the second floor? If the king's guard found it there, they would have had no idea who stole it. That does sound possible, but we shouldn't be so quick to believe him. I spotted the sword when I was heading back from the rooftop garden to the gallery. It was lying in the middle of the hallway. I think... Hang on. Tracker smelled something. The hallway north of Beatrice's bedroom. Okay, we either present this or the map, because the hallway north of Beatrice's bedroom is north of Beatrice's bedroom. It's not on the way from the rooftop garden to the gallery. I think that's going to be our... Uh, our play. It's one of these two. Objection. Yep, alright. Gotcha. Eugene, I'm sure you're well aware of this, but the best way to lie is to hide a false detail within many truths. And what are you trying to insinuate, Mr. Cuthbert? You said that you were heading from the terrace to the gallery. Did you take any detours? Of course not. With the armbands nullified, my intelligence was slowly fading. I wanted to return to Harold as soon as possible. Witness, I'd like for you to take a look at this floor map of Frigga Manor. Yeah, there we go. This is the location where that wild dog found the sort of spell eating. We just zipped over to Eugene and his face is just covered by this graphic. Okay, he had the anime glasses up. So tell me, Eugene, how did you spot the sort of spell eating? When it was hidden in the hallway north of Beatrice's room. That's... Why are you nitpicking such an insignificant statement? He probably just got distracted and went down the wrong hallway. Miss Tamora, Eugene came from the rooftop garden, and he was adamant that he went directly to the gallery to re reunite with Harold. Even if his intellect was muddled, he was intent on reuniting with his worried companion. He definitely took the direct route, but if he did, he would never have been able to see into that hallway. That hallway goes to a really stupid location, by the way. I was wondering why that place was in the... Such a contrived spot, and now I know why. But we do know Harold reunited with Eugene in the gallery, so that checks out. I see your point, Mr. Cuthbert, but what does this mean? It means that the witness lied about where he was before he discovered the sort of spell eating. He wasn't coming from the rooftop garden. He came from the air vents in that specific hallway. I... <clears throat> so why were you in that hallway, Eugene? You lied in your testimony. Was it because you wanted to hide what you were really doing that night? I... I... So this actually is the accomplice. Like, Ruby seems to know, or her statement implied that she might have known that this was the guy, so... Maybe this is Ruby's accomplice, which is still hilarious. But I feel like Beatrice might have threatened him. Because that would follow. It still doesn't explain who murdered him, though. Admit it, Eugene. You snuck through the air vents to avoid detection. Then you used the air vent in that hallway to break into William's study. After that, you murdered him using his letter opener, didn't you? That's not what I went there to do! Well... That's a sentence that you may have blurted out and not realized, or maybe you're just ready to come clean. That's not what I went there to do! Uh, squeeze me. Oh, uh, uh, crap. I, mm. I, I may need to refit these armbands. They, they seem to be slipping. <laughs> I wonder what Beatrice is thinking of all this. Order in the court. Witness. 
Is this true? Did you break into William Frega's study during the lockdown? Yeah, yes. I did enter his study. But not for the reason you think. William Frega was already dead when I got there. What? What did you just say? It's true. Do you honestly expect us to believe a story like that? You're interrogating a talking monkey, my guy. This is not even on the top 10 list of weird things that have happened today. How could someone else have killed the victim before you got there? Tracker took the sword of spell eating, and you were the only intelligent creature that could walk through the air vents. I understand how unbelievable and suspicious this sounds. Why do you think I lied in the first place? But it's the truth, Mr. Cuthbert. You have to believe me, even though I've done nothing but lie so far. We don't see any contradicting thoughts through the eye, but that hardly absolves him of guilt. But can he really be telling the truth? Man, we're cresting four hours here. I think we might be going into stream three on this case. If that's true, that only brings us back to the one question we've been asking since this all began. Who murdered the man? Yeah, who really did this? I still think it might be Ruby. Eris is a close second. Frega? Yeah, oh, maybe. What? You got, a, you got an epiphany? What's up? Okay, Eugene. Let's assume you're telling the truth. Do you actually believe me? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You're still my only suspect for this. But I know better than anyone about jumping to conclusions. Oh, do you now? You were doing a fair bit of jumping earlier. If the monkey did kill him, then he would have blood on him. Blood is not easy to clean off. Eh, that is true, considering the nature of the murder and uh, who did it. If this monkey went and slashed his jugular with a letter opener, I'm sure there'd be some stain somewhere. You're not wrong. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. Also, I, you know what? Whoever did this probably has magic blood cleaning spells. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. I see. However, if you want to absolve yourself, I need you to tell me about what you really saw that night. There might be something, anything that might point to who really did this. <clears throat> so he wasn't an accomplice. He was just there. I'm guessing he was there for the will. Very well. I'll tell you what I saw. Although, I doubt you'll believe me. Oh, that's a foreboding way to open the testimony. What's this going to be about? I discreetly made my way to that hallway through another air vent. I exited the air vent in that hallway and tried to leap to the other side. I'm not sure if it was my waning intellect or my desperation, but I collided with something that I didn't see. Aha! Aha! I fell to the ground and found the sword of spell eating laying next to me, so he crashed into something that had it. And that was the thing that was invisible. I wanted to retrieve the sword, but that wild dog forced me to retreat. After that, I continued to make my way to the study. And that's when I found William Frager. He was dead on the floor and lying in a pool of blood. And as if I were blessed by the scared lord himself, I found the will that he was drafting. So I destroyed it. Oh, so we know what happened to the will then, if he's telling the truth. What was in that will, pray tell, but also, yeah, the other rat. What was that other rat? Because Tracker was definitely talking like there was two, and his sense of smell would, uh, would be accurate. Well, frankly, Mr. Harrelson, I find that story very difficult to believe. The judge is now in on this. It's like, all right, talking monkey, fuck it, whatever. I assumed as much, but you know what they say. Truth is stranger than fiction. Is it more likely that you murdered the victim? So the rat is the missing link. It, we don't know that it's a rat. Something was flying, and it was holding the sword. So rat, possibly. It's definitely possible, but it could have been something else. You're clearly trying to cover up what you did by saying that he was already dead. Honestly, I really don't know what to think. I, I checked out at Talking Monkey. Is he really telling the truth? I discreetly made my way to that hallway through another air vent. I exited the air vent in that hallway and tried to leap to the other side. So, the jumping rat. <clears throat> but why were you there in the first place? It all began when William Frager got into an argument with Harold. That cur wanted to defund the prestigious Harrelson Hall of History. I knew a man like William probably had many secrets. So I devised a plan to break into his study and find something that I could use to blackmail him. 
We'll call it rat for now since we don't know what it is. Yep, fair, fair. Invisible rat. As you know, there's a small air vent in that hallway, and it connects to William's study on the ground floor. I wasn't aware that William was planning to stay in his study all night, so I thought I could look through his documents without anybody seeing me. We suppose that does make sense, but is he really telling the truth? What happened when you tried to leap to the other air vent, Eugene? I'm not sure if it was my waning intelligence or my desperation, but I collided with something that I didn't see. I thought monkeys were extremely dexterous. Are you just clumsy? I have impeccable dexterity! Have you seen my stats? It sounds like we struck a nerve there. I must have been muddled from losing the armband's magic. I fell to the ground and found the Sword of Spell Eating laying next to me. How did you know it was the Sword of Spell Eating? When I held it in my hands, I felt my intellect return. But I also heard Harold call out to me telepathically. He was clearly growing worried, so I knew I needed to move quickly. I wanted to retrieve the sword, but that wild dog forced me to retreat. After that, I, conclude I continued to make my way to the study. Oh, that's interesting. Harold called for him, but he was like, no, nah, I gotta do this study thing first. Damn. Did this wild dog have a white coat of fur? He did? Are you acquainted with him? Something like that. Well, next time you meet him, tell him that I don't appreciate being called a rat. I am a proud orangutan. You can understand him? I've picked up a little of the canine language through my life. I'm also fluent in squirrel and pigeon. I can also speak owl, but I admit it's barely conversational. Man, he is smart. As much as we want to test the validity of those claims, they're not relevant to the case. <laughs> Have you heard of Duolingo? What happened when you entered the study? And that's when I found William Frega. He was dead on the floor and lying in a pool of blood. It seems awfully convenient that he was murdered before you arrived. I know how it may seem, but I'm telling you the truth. And do you have any explanation for how the assailant broke into the study without the sword? I, unfortunately, do not. Please, it's obvious your testimony doesn't match up with the evidence. Whoever did this either entered through the vents, or they used the sword to nullify the lock. His testimony doesn't necessarily negate that, he just found the sword after it was used. And your own testimony states that the sword was abandoned in that hallway. It doesn't match up with what we thought happened, but does it really contradict the evidence we have? Nope, like Simon says, it doesn't. Anyway, what did you do when you discovered the body? I knew it was only a matter of time before someone discovered the body, so I quickly searched the room for something I could use. And as if I were blessed by the scaled lord himself, I found the will that he was drafting. So I destroyed it. So you were the one who took the will. I've been trying to find it. What did it say? I was pressed for time, so I didn't read the entire document. But I found an order to his executor to defund the Haraldson Hall of History. Since he went out of his way to specify that on the current copy, I concluded that his former will didn't have this amendium. So you could save Harold's museum by making sure it never got submitted for probate. Anyways, do you have the will with you? My apologies. I crumpled up the will into a ball and ate it. I then left the room before my intelligence was completely gone. Ugh. We were really hoping to see if William followed through on his threat to disinherit Beatrice. I guess it isn't technically... Wait! Oh? Is this one of those ones where we just press and then we're done? Music stopped. It's hard to believe, but we can't see any direct contradictions. Eh, that invisible thing he collided with is of, of great interest, though. Should we press him more? But what if he's telling the truth? If Eugene did do this, our next course of action is clear. Although that still wouldn't explain how Beatrice fits into this. We recall something the Tracker said to us. Tracker, you said you had to smell to see where the rat was? And when he dropped his stick, you were finally able to see him. Does this mean you couldn't visually see him before he fell down? Yeah, Tracker couldn't see the rat with his eyes, so Tracker used his nose to see it. Eugene was invisible! Eugene, when you were carrying out your plan, did you turn yourself invisible somehow? No, I hardly had the means to. And even if I had somehow convinced Harold to cast a spell on me, he doesn't know how to cast invisibility. Very few mages do. Right. <laughs> okay, spell compendiums for everyone. On it. We recall Eris saying the same thing during the Nightgrave Trials. Only a master of illusion magic could do that. Eris! 
That's how we first thought Beatrice was involved. Eris! Hang on a second. Yeah, Beatrice is illusion. Interesting. Okay, so she might have cast invisibility. I think, uh, I think, uh, Beatrice does have a familiar of some kind. Maybe it isn't a rat, but it's something. It allows her to see, and it's, uh, something that can carry a sword. Next animal that gets mentioned that can carry a sword, I'm calling it. But if Eugene is truly innocent, did she turn someone else invisible? But if that's true, we're right back where we started again. No, think through this. Eugene's testimony fills in a blank that's been missing. I fell to the ground and found the soul of spell eating laying next to me. So the trial theme is familiar. <clears throat> well, we're, uh, we're cross-examining animals on the stand, so yes, as someone who plays Ace Attorney, this is very familiar. Thank you for the coffee. I fell to the ground and found the sword of spell eating lay next to me. How did you know it was the sword of spell eating? When I held it in my hands, I felt my intelligence return. But I also heard Harold calling out to me telepathically. He was clearly growing worried, so I needed a, I knew I needed to move quickly. I wanted to retrieve the sword, but that wild dog forced me to retreat. After that, I continued to make my way to the study. And what happens when we cross-reference that with Tracker's testimony? That's when Tracker smelled flying rat. Tracker could smell where rat was, so Tracker borked at him. Tracker must have scared rat, because he fell on the floor and dropped his stick. How did the sword of spell eating end up in that hallway? Where does that lead us? The thief dropped the sword in the hallway, obviously. Yeah, no, no kidding. The thief dropped the sword in that hallway, but how does that make sense? Well, they rammed in a... What's his face? Eugene. Did they hide the sword there like we originally thought? No, that hallway was close to the gallery. There were plenty of better places to hide the sword. If it weren't for Tracker taking it, it wouldn't have been found even... It would have been found even sooner. The thief must have accidentally dropped the sword there. That can only mean one thing. Why was the thief in that hallway? The thief... was sneaking on top of, through, under, outside of, was sneaking through the air vents. The thief was also sneaking through the air vents. That's the only reason why they would be there. Watch uh, Eris know an invisibility spell, but she also knows a shrink spell, and it was literally just her running through the air vents. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. But that would imply that the thief was as small as Eugene. Could it have been another familiar? And if so, why didn't Eugene notice them? Because they were invisible, moron. Wait. I'm not sure if it was my waning intelligence or my desperation, but I collided with something that I didn't see. He collided with something he didn't see. In other words, it was something that was invisible to him. And as a master of illusion magic, Beatrice is one of the few people at the ball that could cast invisibility. Are we just assuming that? Beatrice would never trust in anyone enough to work together. Yeah, this line also worries me. This concerns me greatly. So either she did away with her accomplice or she has a familiar. Beatrice would never trust anyone enough to work together like this. But she's completely blind. But she's completely blind. She wouldn't have much of a choice. Even so, she's not the type of person to trust her accomplice to stay quiet. Maybe she, uh... Maybe she uses rat familiars and then just kills them after every job. She'd find a way to carry out a plan herself. And she'd only employ someone else's help if she had full control. Okay, so maybe Beatrice shrunk. <laughs> Beatrice is the one with the shrink spell. I'm just imagining a little miniature Beatrice running through the vent, ramming into the walls because she's blind. Have we been approaching this situation incorrectly the entire time? Through the eye, we know that Beatrice was involved somehow. But we just assumed that she was one part of a larger plot. The breaking of the glass and the casting of invisibility. These were the elements that we knew she was involved in, but it never really fit together. Not unless she was the one pulling the strings the entire time. So yeah, she could be the mastermind. Maybe she's not the one that slit his throat. And there's only one way she could be in control the entire time. If it was a familiar. What did Beatrice use to commit the murder? The familiar. 
Oh! I have to do this. So, she has a familiar. I'm guessing this is it. Now, what is the familiar? It's probably an animal we don't know. You know, it's funny. Beatrice mentioned an... Or not Beatrice. Uh, Eugene, when he was talking about languages, mentioned some flying animals. He also mentioned an owl. I wonder if an owl could do this. Because owls are good at seeing. Owl could probably fit in the vent. Owls could hold a sword because they have very strong talons. And it would also explain the scratch marks on uh, William Frege's body. Whatever the familiar is, I don't think it's been brought up yet, but I have a feeling it's an owl. I don't think it's a pigeon. I know uh, Eugene mentioned that as well, but I, I think pigeon is out. I think Beatrice can do better than that. A couple of memories flood into our mind. Is it going to be the one where she says we look tired? A familiar is a creature that a mage has formed a magical contract with. And with that contract, our souls are bonded. I can speak with him telepathically. I can even see through his eyes and cast my spells through him if I wanted to. Really? I never knew a spell like that existed. It's quite rare, and very few mages take the time to learn how to cast it. I wonder if an owl could actually crush the handle of that letter opener. I mean, they're strong. I'm not sure they're that strong. Or maybe that'll imply what the animal is. Maybe it's not an owl. It's something I'm not thinking of yet. Hi, I'm Tyrion Cuthbert. I'm Miss Tamora's ward. I extend my hand out to shake hers. Ah, hey. Hey, Za. Here's what you were bringing up earlier. How she's like, how does she know to shake his hand? Well, I guess they're, they're gonna, they're gonna call her out on that. We extend out our hand to shake hers. She has an aristocratic air to her. So we hope we're not being too informal. Instead of taking her hand... Wait a minute! She keeps clapping her hands together! What's up with that? That's something I keep forgetting to mention that tick. What does that have to do with things? I wonder if when she claps her hands together, she's getting her familiar's attention so her familiar looks at her. And then because her familiar is looking at her, she can see what's going on in her immediate vicinity. Maybe that's why she claps her hands. I wonder, I wonder if there's some symbolic reason she claps her hands. Like, I don't know, maybe her familiar is a freaking seal. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's to get the familiar's attention. To make it look at her so she can see what the hell's going on. Instead of taking our hands, she claps her hands together and takes a deep breath. What? Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Yes, you did. It's a bit of a, ha of a habit of mine. Oh. Nevertheless, she finally shakes our hand. I've heard much about you, Mr. Cuthbert. My name is Beatrice. Wait, did we actually mention our name? I think we might have. Yes, we did. Okay. We didn't know that she was blind back then, so we barely noticed. But how did she know that we were holding out our hand? Uh, at the time that we were discussing this in chat, I just mentioned that there are blind people that think to do... Well... I guess it doesn't necessarily make sense in this case because an aristocrat talking to a, a lowly peasant like me may not be, uh, may not just assume that we'd shake hands. Maybe we would like bow or something, whatever. But uh, no, she shook our hand. She straight up was like, oh, there's a hand here. I should shake it. Well, do you have any other questions for me? If we're wrong about this, Beatrice will surely be acquitted. And after that, the Inquisition will turn their attention to Harold and Eugene. But there's only one way to know for sure. Your Honor, the prosecution has no further questions for the current witness. He's dismissed. What? I... see. You had something else planned, don't you? Yeah. And I actually need your help. Oh, do you have a fancy spell we can uh, call on? Really? Are we going to cast Detect Magic on the room? Where is the owl? Where is it? Check the rafters. We tell her about our plan. Reperio Arcanum? It's coming, it's coming. <gasps> really? I feel like you're making some big assumptions there. Wouldn't the Inquisition check for something like that? I know. It's the best play we have. You remember what Steelwind said yesterday? But the moment gu the guards saw the body... Oh, yeah, we mentioned this. One of them cast Detect Magic. With that spell, they would have seen any invisible people hiding in this room. Well, they were gone by then. Wait, you can use Detect Magic like that? Of course, it's standard procedure. Like all spells, invisibility leaves traces of magic on the person it's cast on. So are we going to find, like, like, uh, claw mark 
traces of that magic on Beatrice or something. So mages can use detect magic as a way to see through invisibility. Or maybe the reason Beatrice can see things is because she's literally got an invisible animal on her shoulder at all times. She's got like a, a damn flying squirrel or something. And that's how she sees. That would actually be kind of cool. That's a neat idea. So she's got literally an invisible camera on her at all times. And that's how she's been seeing this whole time. That would actually be a very innovative solution. If everything goes the way I think it will, you'll be able to confirm its location. Once you do that, you just need to reveal it to everyone. All right, I'll follow your lead then. Here we go. So, Mr. Cuthbert, how do we proceed? Your previous witness brought about more revelations than I could have ever guessed. My God, we need more talking monkeys up here. This is hilarious. However, you still haven't given a substantial explanation about how the murder occurred or who actually did it. I wonder if this means that Beatrice says she's the accomplice and her familiar was the murderer, which is a stretch. I would still say Beatrice is the murderer. I wonder if she had a, a human partner. I understand that, Your Honor, but it will all make sense after I call my next witness. Another witness? Oh, God, how many animals are we getting up here? I understand your hesitance, Your Honor, but everything that we've learned through these trials is finally coming together. And this final witness will tie it all together in a perfect knot. Well, I don't know what's coming. Take your guesses now. Your Honor, the prosecution called Beatrice Frege to the stand. Oh, well, we're going to force her to be there so that her familiar has to be present or something. Ruby is not going to... Yeah. Seriously, Cuthbert, you went to all that trouble just to end up calling my client to the stand. You and your client have the right to refuse, Miss Tamora. But I wonder how that will reflect on your client's character. It doesn't really matter. She's already standing here with Miss Tamora. We can carry out our plan regardless of what she decides to do. But it will have much more impact if we can bait her into lying on the stand. My client says that she's willing to testify. However, we would like to propose a short recess. Oh, what are you planning? What's coming? What's the gag? What's the move? With these new developments, I'm sure you can understand that we have much to discuss. Oh, that familiar is gone, isn't it? No, Tyrion, don't stand for this. No, 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 she gets on the stand now. <laughs> I will probably be saving. If a save comes up, it's going to be the end of the stream. But uh, Tyrion needs to be like, no, no saving. We, we doing this now. I see no reason not to grant that offense's request. No, 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 that we, we need to object to this immediately. Is this really okay? No, it's not. If we give them time to prep, they might not realize what we're doing. I, I used to read ba stories about this guy. His name was Batman. My God, with prep time, the things he could do. This is, we can't allow this. I know, but I don't think we have anything to worry. Tyrion, my boy, I think you have lots to worry about. We've been building a psychological profile of Beatrice since this case began. Oh, our profile is already complete. It's hard to read her expression and emotions, even with the eye of Horus. She keeps herself guarded and keeps her true intentions unknown. Oh, there's the first time we've seen him. He has not had a sprite. The only time we've even seen his face is in his damn little evidence icons and his profile icon. You, uh, you have quite the outfit there, my guy. That is at least exotic, if not ascended. She's powerful, more powerful than her father even cared to admit. Despite this, he tried to control her and put her inside a cage. Ooh, yeah, you're a meanie. But Beatrice Frega would never live in a cage. She wanted freedom and control, and she would do whatever it took to get it. We're sure the accident that blinded her didn't help things. You know what? I have a feeling if I save this until next stream, it's going to be a very short stream going into Trial 5. I feel like pushing to the end. I think we've answered a lot of the questions that have come up, and the few things that haven't been addressed are about to be. I think we may uh, go for maybe the five or six hour mark on this one. I actually don't have any clients tomorrow morning, so I'm kind of okay with going late. Let's see where this goes. We're sure the accident that blinded her didn't help things. When everything was said and done, she abandoned everything. Her wealth, her status, her family. She could have waited. She could have gritted her teeth until it was her turn to lead House Frega. If she was willing, she could have even secretly pushed her father past the gates of death herself. 
But she couldn't bear to live like that, even temporarily. We have no idea why this is how she chose to do that. Perhaps it had something to do with their meeting. But we do know one thing. Oh, there's a sprite! <clears throat> Beatrice Frega will never put herself in a position of vulnerability. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's a strong girl. She's a tough one. If we endanger her freedom, she will make sure that she can see who she is up against. Oh, so we're saying that we're forcing her to be in a position where her familiar will be present. In the interest of giving the defense time to deliberate, we will be taking an extended recess. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's see how this plays out. I'm, I'm willing to go the long haul. I'm willing to go to the end here. We can do a long Sunday. We've done, we've done four-hour streams almost every other night, except for, I think it was like New Year's Eve or something, where it was quicker, but uh, we can go a little longer. I want to see how this goes. Man, it is amazing the judge has not freaking broken that gavel one of these times. He just goes all in. It is so extra. As we were exiting the courtroom, we sent Celeste to do a little reconnaissance. It should be similar to when she scanned Valentina during the Nightgrave trial. <laughs> I can just imagine Celeste walking around whispering, Repario Arcanum! Okay, okay, no, no, we're gonna do it. Repario Arcanum! No, nothing, okay. Repario Arcanum! <laughs> Tyrion, my voice is really hoarse from whispering Repario Arcanum, but, but I found things. Were we able to see it? Yeah, it's definitely there, and it sits on her shoulder most of the time. I was right. She has an invisible familiar acting like a, a damn security camera on her shoulder at all times. That's how she sees. And I'm guessing it's an owl? It could be a bird? I don't think a bird could actually... Uh, carry the sword around, although it could be like a, a small hawk, like a, maybe a kestrel or something. So she keeps it close to her, that's good to know. It looks kind of weird though, but I've never used a tech magic like this before. Well, we doubt it someone like her would choose a conventional animal, especially for something like this. I'm still feeling owl. Cuthbert, no, you go away. Hey, Miss Tamora, what's up? There's something I need to show you. <laughs> it better not be a gut punch. Preferably a lot. No, this needs to... Celeste? Celeste, you're our bodyguard. You you better get your ass over here. Uh, Tracker Eugene said it looked like a rat. Um, tr well, first of all, Eugene couldn't see it. Second of all, Tracker couldn't see it. Tracker just classified what was in the room as a rat. Remember, Tracker thought Eugene was a rat. So it, it's definitely a, a flying animal of some kind, I'm almost certain probably an owl or a small hawk or something like that because tracker said it was flying so i'm also thinking like i was almost imagining a flying squirrel but i don't think a flying squirrel could carry a sword so uh who knows who knows celeste gives us a concerned look but we nod to show that it's okay i'm not sure it's okay this might not be okay my guy she moves to sit on the bench where she can keep an eye on beatrice Okay, lead the way. You look upset about this. You're about to lead us to a place where Eris is going to knife us in the back. We're about to get the uh, we're about to get the Arya Steelwind treatment. Remember what Eris said? Oh, we're in for a bad time because Eris said Eris literally threatened us. Eris was like, "Hey, uh, you need to bring this trial to a speedy conclusion, or something might happen to Tyrion." I have a feeling that something's about to happen to Tyrion. What the balls is this room? Is this like the judges' chambers or something? No, we're about to get messed up. We're about to get cut. This is not good. Den? What is the den? 